Microsoft has quite a few learning tools available. So Immersive Reader, we're going to look at in Immersive Reader. We'll probably look at it in the context of Microsoft Teams, which is what we've used quite a bit up until this date. But Immersive Reader is across the whole of Office 365. And Immersive Reader now goes beyond Microsoft products. And it's embedded in other third party products that they work with. So Microsoft aren't precious about this. They're offering it out as a tool to get access for pupils or for parents. And you will see that continue to grow. So we'll look at how to use text preferences. We'll look at how to change grammar and we'll look at reading preferences. Previously, we looked at maths tool, which is in uh, it's in Teams in OneNote class notebook. It helps you do calculations. We also looked at PowerPoint presenter coach, but today we're going to look at Microsoft Translator. The idea of an inclusive classroom is that it supports all of those areas. Uh, it should make communication effective and clear. It shouldn't be that the platform or the version of the information that you choose is the barrier to learning. That The idea of an inclusive classroom and accessibility tools is that everybody, regardless of a learning need or a language need, should be able to gain access to the lesson or if it's a parent, be able to get access to the resources that the school has. There is this really big periodic table and I showed it in my previous webinar and I'm quickly going to show it again. You're not expected to be able to read that, but this grid is updated by somebody in Microsoft called Mike Tholson. He is a guru as far as learning uh, tools are concerned. And down the left hand side, you've got the different different aspects of the learning tools and then across the products in the middle you've got how it appears or which products it appears in that's updated month by month that was the one from april so the may one will be out very soon normally comes out towards the end of the month but they're useful for you to know just what aspects of office 365 have the various requirements from the learning tools that you've got so if you wanted such as page colors which is the third row down you can see it's in OneNote, it's in Word, it's in Outlook, it appears in Teams, it's in something called Flipgrid, and it's also in Office Lens. And now it's in the Edge browser as well recently. That's the new version of the Edge browser, not the old version of the Edge browser. If you want to see what they look like, all of those different uh, platforms and apps we've covered in previous webinars, which are available on our YouTube channel. So today we are going to start off with Microsoft Translator and then we'll go back to Immersive Reader. So when you arrive at Microsoft Translator, you will get a choice to join or start a conversation if you're going to go to the website, but you also can use it in different Office products. So PowerPoint and Word is, is where it's best utilized. Uh, and you can choose the primary language that you prefer as a recipient. So as a teacher, you could talk in English, but if they have translator switched on in the PowerPoint or Word, it will then appear in their native language, so it translates it for you, like some of the other translation platforms, but this one's in the Microsoft offering. So we've got a couple of ways to get to it. If I come right out here, if I click that first one, should open up a browser here. And then in that browser, will be the Microsoft Translator website. So when I say join a conversation or start a conversation, if you are presenting as a teacher, and we'll show you how to do that in a minute, you will be able to generate a conversation code. You pop your name in, so it might be me for Martin, and you put in your language you want to view in, and you press enter, and you would go into a conversation. And then what you're presenting as a teacher or the discussion you're having with a parent would appear to them. You can also start a conversation in a similar way. You just need to be logged in with one of your accounts. So most frequently, it's going to be your Microsoft account. You would click on that, and it would ask you to sign into your account. And then once you're signed in, it picks up my details from Office 365 account. It picks up my default language is English. I'm using the product in the classroom, and then you can just go into enter. And then it will then start to build your conversation. And it wants to do a quick microphone test. So I'm going to go allow. Hello, can you hear me, Microsoft? If it doesn't work because I'm using it on Teams, I might just skip it for the process of its demonstration. And then here I am in my classroom, and what I am saying would then be available as a, in real time for me, it's in my English language down there, but it's available in the native language of the person who wants to receive this conversation. You can also use QR codes if you've got a mobile phone or a tablet. 
So here is it recording what I'm saying and it's appearing there on screen. I'm in presenter mode at the moment and then my participants would have the language that they wish to have here on screen. And although I'm speaking English, it might come up in French or Spanish. All they need to do is put in the conversation code and they would be able to join my classroom. And then all of a sudden, whereas the language may have been a barrier to a learning maybe you've got people that's come from another country and they don't speak speak a lot of english currently this can really help if they've got this on screen on their tablet on a, on a mobile device or on a laptop or on even a desktop it's just there so you can just go ahead and you can use it built right in it's a website it's free you don't you don't need to have anything other than your office 365 account and you can get it straight in there are some settings up here in the corner so you can adjust uh, whether you can mute everyone, whether you want to lock the conversation, you know, in cruise shift, uh, front size, uh, font size, but you can save the transcript. In other words, what you've spoken about, and then you could use something like immersive reader to turn it into another language. You can also just exit there at the same time. So I just leave that tagging along in the background. The other way that you can get it, if I jump out of this presentation and I jump across to the other browser, is you can download and install an app. So if you go to www.microsoft.com forward slash English US and then forward slash translator, which is the other link in the presentation, and you click install, it will then go to Microsoft. You can on Windows 10, as long as you've got a Windows 10 computer, it will then download the app. So it will go to the Microsoft store and go to the English version because it was on the American version. And there is the free app translator. If you've got a laptop that is managed by the school, you may be prevented from installing apps from the Microsoft Store or you may be permitted depending on the setup you've got. So you might have to raise the support ticket if you've got to turn it on the sort of moment and press get and then I'll press open. It's going to take me to the store and I should be able to purchase it and install it on my laptop. So instead of having it in a web browser, I've then got the Microsoft Translator software all on my computer. It just appears down here in the, or it will appear in the, in the start list here. And press get, and it should be as easy as, I'm not going to sign in across all devices at the moment. I'm going to install it, and it starts downloading, and then it will just install on my laptop. And then you've got the same features we just had in the website here on your laptop. If you think that's really useful in your school, maybe you've got quite a diverse range of languages spoken in the pupils that you have in the classroom, you could always ask your turn it on consultant to get it installed on all the pupil laptops, or if you've got an IT suite, the desktop's in there. Uh, and then it can be used as a tool if required or as and when required for all the pupils that are, are working with you. You wouldn't often use it full time, but it might be that it's it's relevant in particular lessons. It could be having a language lesson. It's useful for that as well, because if you want to check what something is in Spanish, they can speak the word in English uh, and up it would come. So regardless of which phase you're working, whether it's primary or secondary, I do find Translator really useful as an accessibility tool. Before I go into immersive reader, because there is nothing else to cover on Translator, is anybody in a position where they want to ask any questions or anybody want to unmute a mic and ask any questions relating to translator before I go on to immersive reader? No. OK, I'll go over to immersive reader then. I am going to go to immersive reader over here in Teams. So what I've got here is a set of demo teams. So these are used for working with our Microsoft schools. Uh, and I might want to go into my class team. So I could be using my teams for distance learning after 1st of June. So I could have some of the pupils in class and some of them at home might be in class and they're all just using teams for getting on with their daily work and using something like class notebook. So over in teams, if you wanted to, uh, to get access for a pupil in the, and they were struggling to read all of the text that's appearing here in posts, Mine's jumping a little bit because I'm busy downloading and streaming at the same time. So I'm going to scroll up and find a, an announcement. Maybe there's a remote learning announcement. I can click it. And then on the dot, 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 something that a lot of schools have asked me about is, well, where is Immersive Reader in the different areas of Teams? Well, it's in OneNote Class Notebook, and we've covered that in, in previous webinars. It's in assignments, and we've covered that in previous webinars, but a lot of people didn't realize it's in posts. So I'm going to show you there. It's on the dot, dot, dots. You go down to Immersive Reader and you click Immersive Reader. And then Immersive Reader should 
he says, launch from here. Let's just try that again, unless it's having a, a slight moment because I'm downloading at the same time as uploading. Uh -huh. Try it on different posts. Oh no, here comes Immersive Reader. It was just taking its time it's because I'm presenting at the same time and using video both ways on a home broadband connection. Here comes Immersive Reader. It's just loading up the text. So what it does is it strips away all of that busyness that you had from the post and it allows the pupil or maybe the parent and I'm going to get rid of those tips uh, to suddenly And it will read what was there in that post, but in an immersive reader. Now, I've made some choices already in here as far as the learning requirements I might have. So you've got three tabs. I want to say we would visit these text preferences. So you can change the size of the font. Maybe you've got a visually impaired pupil and they need that font to be much bigger. But you can drag the font size up to be quite a significant size or you can drag it back down to the original size. You can make it even smaller if it needs to be, but most of the time it's larger. So you've got that option. I know a request has gone to Microsoft a few times is to have the option to go even larger. Uh, if you've got an external monitor, sometimes that facilitates having very, very large text on a laptop screen. The options they've got there tend to be the biggest size you can really meaningfully deal with. You can either increase the space in between or you can have the, te the, de the text density quite high or low. So I'm going to have big spaces in there. I've got mine in Comic Sans, but if I wanted to put it back to Calibri because that suited the font that I wish, but most of the time when you're working with pupils, Comic Sans is quite useful. You can choose your background, so it could be that gray color, but you've got all these other options down here. So I might decide I'm gonna have that pale yellowy brown and that suits my need for my pupils that I've got in my classroom. So it doesn't have to be on a, on a white, you can have fewer colors or more colors. And you can also have the formatting from the source. So and if I switch that off, I would lose the paragraphs and the titles. It all just becomes unformatted text. Uh, you sometimes do need that if you're going to use it also for an activity where they, they may need to reformat it. But you also can have it let out the way it was originally, particularly when you're using it with Teams. It's quite useful to just see it in its native form. You can change the voice settings down here as well. So you can have male or female. You can also have the voice speed. So if you want it to be faster because the pupil's getting impatient or if you actually want it to be slower because they're struggling to take on board what's being read, that's also there for you there as voice options. So that covers everything in the text preferences. We're just taking a little bit more time to go through there. Next, we're going to move over here to the grammar options. So you've got lots of, lots of different ways. This is useful for English. It's useful for SPAG work if you're doing that in primary. Uh, I've also seen this used in secondary with uh, with MFL lessons where you can look for nouns and verbs in different languages. So I might want to turn on the syllables and you can see there it breaks up the words into syllables and you've got the natural pause points in between there, how to break up the words. I'm going to leave the syllables off. You might want to have nouns on so then nouns are highlighted as purple. But if you didn't want that color, you can change the color that nouns are highlighted in. It's same with verbs, same with adjectives and so forth. So if I decided I wanted to look at verbs and adjectives, I've got those on. So they're highlighted there for the peoples. They've got almost like a legend over here to know exactly what it is. You could also have them labeled up on the screen. So if you want to close that down, it tells you there it's labeled up. That's an adjective. That's a verb. And it's all there for you in the middle of the text. So you can bring it in and use Immersive Reader in English lessons. And it's available in the Office suite as well. Word, PowerPoint, Excel. You've got Immersive Reader all built in there. So it's fine. You don't have to just use it in Teams. It lends itself to go into different programs. The reading preferences are the last one. So line focus we haven't got at the moment. But if I switch on line focus, it narrows down and takes around, takes away all the other text around it and focuses the reader on the text that's important, the bit they're reading. So if you then press the play button, I'll drag the playhead back to here. And you can see the line focus scrolls with it. If that was too narrow, I can change my line focus to be slightly wider, although that's having a little a little moment there i should be able to have a wider focus of two lines uh picture dictionary i've got on so if i click on share uh if you've got uh if you've got deaf 
pupils uh, or you want to encourage that sort of Makaton element, you can have visual elements in here as well. It doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't always have to be the most obvious thing. So good, uh, you get the halo up there or there's the third person. So you got the visual dictionary in there too. The beauty also you've got is to translate to other languages. So if I decided I wanted this in French, let's go down to find French, French France, uh, by word or document, and then it should turn the entire document for the person that's using it into French. And if I read it, it reads in the language you've selected. So there's the element there that your EAR pupils can have the text that you've given them all translated into the language that's relevant for them. And if you want to put it back into English, you pop it back. It will then rerun re it in the background as far as Microsoft's concerned, and it will come back up. I'm just going to switch those off and go back over. And it's a slight delay because I am just using this over the top. You might turn off the line focus as well. You can see there, uh, it's quite quick and easy to turn it off. So as far as accessibility tool is concerned, it works, uh, Immersive Reader works in exactly the same way, regardless of which Office 365 app you are using. It's exactly the same layout. It's just a way to break away from the busyness of here and get over into the very streamlined, clean version available there in Immersive Reader. As far as today's session was concerned, we weren't planning to recover any aspects of the accessibility suite from Microsoft. We've covered the elements that were either requested, which was a revisit immersive reader and show you the translator, which helped with the EAL. And I know that was a request that came in quite strongly from a lot of schools. At this point, I'm going to stop screen sharing and I will just check the chat, see if anyone's put any questions in. It doesn't look like there has been, but does anybody want to unmute their mic and ask any questions today? or even share if you've been using Immersive Reader or Translator, how you've used it in your school. Don't be shy. If you, if you think you've got a good example, please do share. Uh, I learned so much as well from hearing what teachers are up to in the real world. OK. If there aren't any other questions, I will stay in the meeting for a little bit. I'll just mute my mic and uh, go through anything that anybody wants to go through in a smaller group or a one-to-one. -one. But otherwise, have a good day and have a good break. And we'll see you after the holidays.